Are you sick of playing the same party game over and over again, like Cards Against Humanity or other Hot Seat Judge games? Have you ever brought board games to a friend's house and then more people showed up than you were expecting? Well, welcome to Elm is from Evil. We're going to give you our top 10 party games that we like to play that have... Eight or more players. <laughs> eight or more players. two honorable mentions that we're going to talk about today. Um, both of these games we haven't played before, but we have played games that are either reskins of these games or very similar mechanics. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about is A Fake Artist Goes to New York, um, designed by June Shisaki, I think I'm pronouncing that right, uh, and published by Oink Games. Um, so in this game, Everyone is drawing one picture together, except for one person who doesn't know what the picture is supposed to be, and they're the fake artist. So the people who know what the picture is supposed to be can't make it too obvious so that the fake artist can easily guess what the drawing is, um, but they have to do enough so that the other people at the table don't accuse them of being the fake artist. So the reason why this is an honorable mention is because this game is very similar to another game by Big Potato Games called The Chameleon, which we have play and we really enjoy. Um, but we do think that this kind of version of that mechanic will be a lot better because yeah. we enjoy drawing games, yeah, so if, that's why we included it. Um, we just haven't gotten this one to the table if you like. Yet. Yeah, if you like Chameleon, if you like Pictionary, you probably are going to like this. And yep. I like them both, so exactly. it's going to be a lot of fun. Yep, so that is Fake Artist Goes to New York by Oink Games. Next honorable mention is Skull King by Grandpa Bex Games. We create games around our family table so that you can create lifelong memories around yours. It's a quote from Grandpa Beck right on the box. So Skull King is a retheme of uh, another previous trick-taking game called Wizard, which Nate actually introduced us to. Nate and Tessa, our friends, yeah. who live in D.C. Mm -hmm. We had like a board game weekend in the woods, and Nate and Tessa introduced us into Wizard. Which, very fun. Which is the exact same thing as Skull Kings, which is a trick-taking game that you're not trying to win every trick. You're trying to uh, guess trying... the amount of tricks you, you will yeah, win. Yeah, you're, you're betting based on the card in your hand how many tricks you think you could win, and everybody bets before you actually start the mm -hmm. game. And the way the bets work for Skull King is everyone, it's like a one, two, yo three ho. count, but yeah, it's a yo, ho, ho. Yeah, you know? so it just, it kind of takes the, the game Wizard, which is just, you know, the your standard card game, like there's no theme or anything to it, and it gives it this really fun pirate theme. And I believe it adds a, some other different mechanics well, you can throw in. And, and instead of the wizards being like a like a trump card to where like a wizard would always win it, it's uh, the Kraken, I believe, in this one always wins a trick. It doesn't yeah. matter the, what number of cards you play down. If you play a Kraken, you win. Um, but there's a couple other ones like mermaids and, and other other cards that that do a, a couple different things that we haven't played it. That's why it's an honorable mention. But we have played Wizard, and we do enjoy Wizard. So yeah. we didn't want to include it on our main list because we haven't actually played this game, but we have played the game that it was based on. Again, this is a reskin. So, yep, and that's Skull King. That's Skull King. Next on our list is Jalapagos. Um... Designed by Lawrence and Philippe Gamelin and published by Gigamic. Um, so, Jalapagos is a... Um, it's a cooperative game until the food is gone. And that is true in every sense. Yeah, it's a 3 to 12 player game. So, it can play with a lot of people. And it's one that you can play with people who are like non-gamers. It's a very simple game. And it actually plays really good the more people that you play this with. Because everyone's eating food every so night. So basically how <laughs> it goes is on your turn, you can do one of four actions. Yes. You can go fishing. And when you go fishing, you reach your hand into this bag. And this bag has all of these wooden balls in it. And you can pull out one ball. And based on the ball that you choose, if there, however many fish is on the ball, that's how many fish you collect. So you move your food token up, mm -hmm. and the, there's food and water. So however many people you start with, you start with enough food and water, I think, for, what, two days? Uh, yeah, I, I believe however many people you have enough food and water to last. It's, it's not quite two days. I believe food is 
like two spaces ahead of water when, okay. for the start, and then you have enough water for two days. Right. But, so then, so you can uh, go fishing. Which, again, you're reaching your hand in there, and however many fish you collect, you move that up. So the next action you can take is going into the the forest or the woods of the mm -hmm. island, uh, going to look for wood, which will help you build rafts. So you always find one piece of wood on the outskirts of the forest or woods to where you'll move your wood tracker one space forward. But then it's got to push your luck to where you can put your hand into that same bag that has the fish. There's... I believe five uh, wood tokens in there, five wood balls. And then one <laughs> and then, black And then one black one, ball. which yeah. is poison. To where if you get poisoned, if you pull that out, uh, then you'll skip your next turn. Yep, and you get this day. like little snake poison card because you were greedy, yeah. trying to go further into the forest to get wood, but you got bitten by a right. snake. So you have to spend the whole next day recovering and you skip your turn. Yeah, so when you reach your hand in the bag, you declare how many wood you're going to pull out. So with there being six balls in there, you got a pretty good chance of, of right, pulling Right, you say, out okay, I'm going to try to push for two, and then mm -hmm. you would pull two balls out. Or yeah. I'm going to push for three. Or my brother the one time was pushing for five. Oh, he got it. He got it. It was, it was amazing. Um, but then you move it up, and you move your, however many wood you collect, you move that token on mm -hmm. the raft tracker. Right, and rafts are important because you, you need <laughs> one raft for each person to get to, off the yeah, island. Yeah, to successfully escape the island at the end of the yeah. game and win. Before the hurricane comes, because that's crucial. Right, so the hurricane is shuffled in, it has to be what, eight days in? Um, I believe it's halfway through the deck. I think it's six cards down. Is when it can start, but yes. then after that it's shuffled, so you don't know after that six day when the hurricane is going to show up. So the, that brings us to the weather cards, because the weather cards are how you gather water, which is your third action. Yep, collecting water. So at the start of the day, you will flip a weather card, and based on the number in the little water droplet is how many water you can collect for that day. So if it's three, anyone who takes the collect water action gets to collect three water and gets to move the water token up three. Mm -hmm. But it could be a zero water day, which means you it's not raining yeah. and nobody can collect water for that day. So... That gets really challenging as you play throughout the game because at the end of every day, you move your water and food token down by however many players there are. So if you have eight players, you every day move food and water down eight. Yeah. Because everyone is eating and drinking for the day. So, and then the last action of the game is searching the wreckage. And this is where... The greedy part of the game. This is comes the in. selfish yeah, action this is the that selfish. you can take. Because this is what implements cards into your personal inventory and allows you to do crazy stuff in the game. To where on your turn, when you take an action, you could say, I'm going to search the wreckage. So, and there's a deck of cards that you can just take the top card. And it's card cool. From. It's got like this little cardboard shipwreck. Yeah. So it's, it's like you are searching the shipwreck to see what you can find. We highly recommend Jalapagos. Uh, my brother's girlfriend introduced us to this game, and it's oh, like yeah. our favorite game to play it's with so a good. large group of people. But we do highly recommend, if you're going to get Jalapagos, getting the expansion, mm -hmm. the uh, They're No Longer Alone expansion, which adds... Um, it adds character Characters roles. and tribes. Get food, get water. Collect wood collect or take wood a card from or, the shipwreck. This yeah. is it. Four actions and... You know how to play the game now. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. But yeah, anyways, that is Jalapagos, and we highly recommend this game. Ah, oh, so good. Next game I want to talk about is Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza by Dolphin Hat Games. This plays up to three to eight players, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a very quick game. So you deal out the deck of cards that are all labeled Taco Cat Goat Cheese or Pizza, mm -hmm. and then as everyone uh, plays, one, plays one card down in a row, you say taco, Morgan says cat. cat, next person says cheese, pizza, I think I skipped goat, but whatever. Taco, cat, goat, cheese, pizza, and if what you're playing ever matches what you're saying, then everyone slaps. Slaps the table in the middle. The last person to slap, the person who has their hand on the top, takes the cards. Yep, takes all the cards. And then you want to be the person who runs out of cards first. Yep. There's... Three special cards in this game: the groundhog, which you gotta dig, uh, the light, and then you gotta dig and yep. then slap. And then slap. Yeah. Um, there is the unicorn. No, the or narwhal. No, narwhal. Narwhal. So narwhal, the narwhal, you, you have to make a horn, horn and, then and then slap, and then there's the gorilla, where you the have to pound your chest and then slap. Yeah. And the gorilla and the groundhog are like the same color, so it's hilarious when you're playing this game. And, and people, people do gorilla and it's groundhog, <laughs> yeah. and then they take all of the cards. Um, this is a great game to play, even with little kids. 
Um, it's it's a blast for for kids and adults. There's different themes too, to where a Santa cookie candy elf, elf snowman snowman Santa cookie elf candy snowman. I, yeah, so there's the, a. The, Candy cookie messes me up every time. Yeah, like, so there's like a Christmas themed, and there's a Halloween themed oh, version too. What's the Halloween theme? I think it's still Taco Cat Goat. Oh no, no, it's, no, no, no. It's, it's different words. It's ghost, ghost vampire. Some I don't remember what that one is, but there is different themes, so it makes like a really good like gift around the holidays too. Mm -hmm. um, especially because it's, you it's, can play it with so many people, and it's so quick. And yeah, it's, it's 10, 15 uh, minutes. You to cannot play, play this game without laughing. It's mm -hmm. amazing. You can't play this game. If you play with aggressive slappers, your, oh, hand, your hands Don't play hurt. it on a wooden table. Play it on a floor you, or a carpet you, or a game mat. Yeah, get yourself a nice a, nice neoprene game mat. Yeah, you know, that'll, that'll cushion. Play it on carpet. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. Taco Cat Go Cheese Pizza. It's, it's a good game. Pick it up. Next on our list is Monikers, published by CMYK Games. And Monikers plays a little bit like Taboo and Charades. Um, so you play the game over three rounds. Um, before the three rounds begin, everyone takes, I think, ten cards, and then they pick five of them from, from those cards. Or you can just hand people a stack of cards and they can pick five that they like. That's typically what we do. Mm -hmm. But any, everyone picks five cards. Um, and the cards have a word at the top um, and then a, like a paragraph description of what that is, or some of the cards will have a picture of what the word is. So they can be, you know, any kind of word, people, things. And so once everyone has selected their five cards, they put them in the pile, and then that becomes the deck that you're gonna use to play the three rounds with. So going into the game, you will know five answers that will be in the deck. So it helps if you remember the cards that you pick. Uh -huh. Yeah, because everyone's building the deck, so you know, yeah, like you said, you, the five Yeah, answers. so you can pick hard ones um, yeah. that are worth more points because you will know what that answer is. Yeah, at the bottom of the cards is point values, too, so it's, like, easier cards right. to, to get people to guess, like Oompa Loompa is There's two one, points. There's one, two, three, and I think four is yeah, the it, highest. Yep. Yeah, um, so they're, they're ranked based on difficulty. So the first round of the game, you play this in teams, by the way, you have, you have two teams, and... So the first round of the game... You can say anything in the first round. You can say round. anything. You can do anything. You can read the entire paragraph. You can do charades. You can do gestures. Um, you have a minute um, to get through as, get your team to guess as many words on the cards as you can in that minute. And again, you can do anything. You can read the whole paragraph. You can do charades, gestures, whatever yeah. you want to get your team to guess that word. Once the minute's up, the deck passes to the next player and the next yep, team. But you keep all of the cards that your team was successfully able to guess because mm -hmm. those will be points at the end of the round. Right, so you keep going until the whole deck's gone and then you add up points for the round. And then after that, you collect all the cards again, yep, shuffle them cards. up. Shuffle them up, and then you start round two, and round two is same cards, but you can only give a one-word clue to get your team to guess it. But it's the same answers. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a memory game also, because even though you only have a one-word clue, you've heard all of these cards before, um, so your, your pool of guesses is a lot shorter than it typically would be in a game, other games like this. Right, to where in the first round, uh, to get someone to guess... Uh, you could have said, to get someone to guess Oompa Loompa, you could have said, uh, the short people, the short orange people in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And then in round two, you're just gonna, you could say orange. Or you could say chocolate. Or chocolate, yeah. Right, and then you're trying to guess, like, what words did I hear that would make sense for chocolate? Mm -hmm. You know, and there might be a few, but, I mean, your, your pool of guesses is significantly smaller than it typically would be in, like, you know, a similar guessing word game. Yeah. So then you just go around till till that deck's empty, add up the points, and then round three, same deck of cards, shuffled up, but it's charades. Or gestures. Charades is gestures. Yeah, okay. <laughs> charades is, is only is just gestures. And yeah. you can do charades with um, a small sound effect. Sound effect, that's what I meant. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So charades and sound effects, but you can't speak any words. And there's different expansions to this game, too, that includes new cards that you can use. Um... We have the Shut Up and Sit Down version, which uh, is a, an expansion that they made for this game, and it's really fun. Um, it is a great party game. Uh, you can play it with 
pretty many, pretty much any players. It says four what to, what's the four to sixteen, again? four to sixteen plus. Yeah, four so, to sixteen yeah. plus. <laughs> Limited amount of players you can play this game with. If, if it's a sixteen plus, well, I guess, I guess because everyone's putting in five cards, like that would put a somewhat cap on it. You know, yeah. Because otherwise, your deck's gonna be huge if you play with a lot right. of people. Right, but I mean, it's it's such a fantastic party game. It's it's so great. Um, but yeah, that's monikers. It's monikers. Check it out. Fantastic. Talking about Space Team now. Mm -hmm. Specifically Space Team with the expansion, because the expansion is what's going to make this a party game. This adds enough players to get the player count up to nine. So Space Team mm -hmm. is a game where you have five minutes to repair your ship before it explodes. And you, everyone's playing with a different deck of or the same deck of cards, but various tools and certain crisis deck that they have to get through. Every player has their own crisis in front of them that they're trying to resolve those issues by using the tools, but you might not have the tools you need to resolve the crisis card in front of you. It might be in the other player's hand who's sitting across the table. Right, because all of the tools are shared amongst the right. astronauts so on the ship. on your card, if you need the moon whisk to solve it, you're going to be asking players, oh, I need the moon whisk, I need the moon whisk. They can't hand it to you from across the table. They have to pass it to the player next to them and, then and get it to go And they have to pass around. it to the next person until it gets into your hand. But only having five minutes, everyone's trying to solve their, their crisis Their own crisis deck. cards, and they also need different tools. So everyone's just shouting Everyone's the just shouting, I need the moon whisk, I need the moon whisk. Right. However... Some of the crisis cards don't specifically say what tool you need. They might just have a picture. And the picture could just be right. like a random thing that might look like a lawnmower or a blender. So uh, you're just yelling, <laughs> I need the tool that looks like a blender and kind of like a lawnmower. Yeah, it's five minutes of fun with the timer. And it typically plays three to six. But when you add the Triangulum expansion, that's what gets you up to those nine players. And that's going to make this a party game. And I don't think we mentioned it, but the reason you're solving the crisis decks is because... Hidden amongst everybody's crisis decks is the spaceship yes, parts that's how you that you are trying to yeah. find. So when you solve the, enough crisis cards, you'll eventually come across a spaceship part and you put it in the middle. And there's six of them. And once you find all six, it completes your spaceship and you've successfully, as a team, repaired your spaceship and you win the game. All right. And that's space team. The space team. Next on our list is just one published by Repost Production. So we are going to caveat just one because the... Uh, Player count is three to seven. However, it very easily plays up to eight players. I want to say very easily because you got to pass a board around. You, you can you have you have play. enough yeah. to play eight players, which is why we included it on this list. So, just one is a very simple game. Um, everyone has these dry erase boards, and one person will close their eyes, flip a card, and say a number, uh, one through five. And they're, they're facing the card outwards to all of the other players. This is a cooperative game, so everybody is on the same team. So they'll flip a card, and they'll say, like, two. And two might correspond to the word chocolate. So everybody else knows that they have to get the person with their eyes closed to guess the word chocolate. However, they can only write one word on their dry erase yeah, board. It's just one. Yep, just, just one. Just, just one word. They can only give a one-word clue to have them guess the word chocolate. So once everybody writes their clue down, uh, everyone flips their board. They reveal it to everyone who is writing. Right, and the person still, the one person who's guessing still keeps their yeah. eyes closed. Yeah, you compare So they your reveal words. it, and if anyone matched with you and wrote the same clue, both of those clues get thrown out and you can no longer use them. So you don't really want to put down obvious clues because you might match with somebody, and then that's less clues the person guessing has to work with. But you also don't want to be too obscure, because then none of the clues will make sense to the person guessing. So it's very fun. You're constantly like looking at the players like, are you going to put the obvious one down? Because you can't talk, you can't yeah. discuss. You're, you're um, not going to... We, we've done it a little eyeballing bit. eyeballing people yeah. like, are you going to do it? Am I going to do it? And then you flip, and then you both put down the word... The same word, and yeah, then it gets both, thrown Both out. players oh. put down sweet, so now the, they're just left with milk and dark. Right. So, I mean, it, it, you might be able to get chocolate from milk and dark. But, but it's, they, it's fun because the more people you play this game with, the odds are you're going to match with more people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the guesser might only have one or two clues to work with, um, and it can get... It can get really fun. So in order to win this game, I think you have to get through, what, 16 rounds? Uh... 
13? 13. I think 13 rounds. 13 yeah, rounds. 13, 13 with correctly in, in guessing yeah. the word. So once that person correctly guesses it, it'll move to the next person. So the reason we say it can easily play at eight is because the person guessing doesn't typically, they don't need their dry erase board because they're the one guessing, they're not writing anything. So if you have eight players, person guessing just hands their board to the eighth player, and then you have seven people writing down clues. So it works pretty well at eight players. If you have that many people, you can still play this game. Um, but yeah, that is just one. That's just one. Very easy, very simple party game. You can play it with pretty much anybody. It's a nice filler game or to just start the night off. Uh, but yeah, just one. Just one. Love it. Don't Get Got from Big Potato Games. This is the party game that you play while the party is happening. This could take all night or five minutes. So in Don't Get Got, everyone has a little wallet that they can insert six little sleeves of uh, very thin cards that are your six missions. These are things that you have to get other players to do. Uh, it could be as simple as get them to have get them to pick something up that you've dropped and hand it back to you, or it can be to get them to give you advice uh, for muscle cramps. So you're trying to trick other players into getting uh, to doing your six tasks, and once you trick them into doing it. Uh, you say, you just got got, and then you show them the card that you got them to do, and then you can fold it over, and then you either failed it or you nailed it. And nailed it, you got them to do it, and failed it brings me to the next point. If someone calls you out that you're trying to trick them into getting to do one of your six different missions, then uh, you have to pull the card out, flip it to the failed it side, and slide it back into your wallet. Uh, the game ends once someone completes three of their missions, but like I said, it happens out throughout the course of the night. You can play other games while you're playing Don't Get Got. This game is great. This would be a really good one. Like if you're going on vacation, you have like, you know, family members that, you know, are going to be playing with you for an extended period of time. I don't think it has too much replayability because... Well, there are there are different versions of this. There's well, this is the Shut Up and Sit Down one. Yeah, this is the Shut Up and Sit Down expansion, but there are uh, there is another expansion to this. I think just the base game. Yeah, I think yeah. the... Yeah, so just the base you can game. get more missions um, to mix it up, and each mission... Oh, no, they're not double-sided, but there's different layers. So they'll be like level one, level two, and then like an advanced the version. Yeah, the advanced ones we really didn't play with because those ones can be... A game Those over, are like the long cons. Over months. Like yeah, they're... the long cons. <laughs> it's, it's mail another player a letter that says you got got with this mission in it. Uh, maybe. I think that was one of them. Or like yeah. it sh probably would be something in there. Yeah. It's it's something that would play over a long period of time. Despite like losing this game, I do enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Just I wish they would come up with more expansions so I'm, that way, I'm sure they will. If we didn't mention it, it plays two to ten uh, players. Yeah, so. there's enough wall cards for that many people. It's it's great. Let's yeah. don't get got. Don't get got. Next on our list is Herd Mentality. Uh, another one from Big Potato Games. Herd Mentality is a very fun game. It plays four to twenty. Four, four to twenty. Uh, <laughs> it's such yeah, a weird can, player count. But this one is another one that plays good with a lot of people because uh, the whole objective in this game is to be part of the majority, part of the herd uh, per se, because it's cow themed. So basically what you do in this game is someone will flip over a card and it will have a question on it. Like, what is the best type of breakfast food? So then everyone has a sheet of paper and they have to write down what they think is the best breakfast food. And you can play this one of two ways. You can either write down what you think is the best breakfast food, or you can write down what you think what the, you think the yeah. majority yeah. of people will say, because in order to score points in this game, you need to be part of the majority. What so is, What is the best breakfast food? On the count of three. You ready? One, mm -hmm. two, two, three. three. Bacon. Damn it. Bacon's good, too. <laughs> Bacon's I don't know, I panicked. Not... I just said pancakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pancakes are good. All breakfast food? Uh, all, all breakfast. All breakfast, all breakfast food. You, how good. do you choose? Bacon. Okay. So, anyways, you have to be part of the majority. So, once everyone has written down what they think the best breakfast food is, everyone reveals their answers. And whoever is the majority, so say bacon was the majority answer, anyone who wrote down bacon will score a cow token. Uh, which means one point. 
if somebody else matched with you, so say you didn't write bacon but you wrote eggs, and two other people matched with you, you weren't a part of the majority, but other people had the, were thinking the same thing as you. Yeah. So you don't score points, but you also are saved because if you are the odd person out, say you wrote down the... rye bread or toast or something. Who, who would write down rye bread? I don't know. For the, the odd best, person out. The best breakfast food, <laughs> rye bread? I don't know. So if you okay. write down an answer and you're the odd one out and nobody else wrote down your answer, you get the pink cow. And the pink cow, while you have the pink cow, you can continue to score points in future rounds, but you cannot win with the pink cow. And the only way to get rid of the pink cow is if somebody else takes it from you by being the odd person out. So you never want to be the odd person out. You always want to either match with somebody or be in the majority. Mm -hmm. So everybody is like, when you're writing your word, everyone's looking around like, okay, what do we think this group of people like, what do we think their favorite breakfast food would be? It kind of helps if you know the people that you're playing with, but th the questions are pretty objective. Like, you don't have to know the people that you're playing with. You can just put down a popular answer um, yeah. that you think would work. But yeah, it's great. There is also a rule in here that makes this game hilarious. Oh. It says if somebody is taking too long in a turn, everyone else is allowed to moo them My until gosh. they finish. So many mooings <laughs> it's happened. Great. And when you start getting mooed by oh, seven pressure. other people, you can't think about what's the best breakfast food. You just write something dumb down, like rye bread. Right. Like, so we can just, like, take you forever. Everyone's just like, moo! Yeah. Moo! But that's something I feel like we are going to carry over in the, into other games. <laughs> where we will just start. A long term. We are going to moo other We're just going to moo them. Uh, it's so good. And then if you have, like, a wash where, like, two people tied, another two people tied, and then two, like, if you have ties across the board, just nobody scores point, but people avoid the pink cow. Um, so there can be wash rounds, mm -hmm. too. But, oh my gosh, this game is so much fun. It was a lot more fun than I initially thought it would be. Like, mm -hmm. we initially picked this up because we have board game nights with our family, and there can be a lot of people there, um, you know. 10 plus people and you don't know how many people exactly you're gonna play and I'm like well this one plays up to 20 let's pick this up just so we kind of have another like large group game to play and we played it and it was such a fun experience it was the box is really nice too yeah the, the box is like this, this is actually felt in the yeah, black area felted cow patterns yeah it's it's really nice this is a very accessible game too you can you know buy this from Target and Walmart I don't even think this is available at friendly local gaming stores no, I yet. No, I think this might be a, a big box retail exclusive right. store. I think right now you could only find this on like Amazon Target, or Target or Walmart. Walmart. I think those Maybe are the ones that have it right now. This is a, a great party game that's not a hot seat judge game that you can play with a ton of people. And you actually kind of want there to be a ton of people because you have to be in the majority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's herd mentality. It's herd mentality. All right, here we go with Sushi Go Party from Game Right. This is a two to eight player uh, set collection game where you are trying to collect different forms of sushi and like wasabi and different kind of rolls in order to score points. And the way you do this is you start with seven or eight cards. I believe the amount of cards you start with changes based on how many players there are. Uh, you just pick one card uh, to play into your set and then you pass the remaining cards it's to the player a, it's next to you. It's a drafting game. So. Yeah, it's drafting. Yeah. So after you, you pass that, you'll get cards coming in uh, from the other player. And then you just pick one that you want to keep and pass the remaining. Mm -hmm. And the great part about Sushi Go Party is that there's so many different forms of scoring with the replayability. Because there's this board in the center that has a scoring track all the way around it. But there's uh, seven different slots on how you can score to where there, you put these little... Uh, cards in there that says that the these rolls score one two and five based mm -hmm. on if you have one two and five or these car cards score special at the end of the game these car cards score each round uh, with like the shrimps or something like that it it adds a lot of replayability to the game and it's very simple anyone not anyone can play it 
but I mean, could, could anyone play it? I think I so. I feel like anyone Cards, what is really nice is the cards will say their scoring conditions on the actual card, so it's not even like you have to read the board in the middle. Right, You That's can true. look at the cards and know how they score. Uh, what's uh, nice about this game, though, is like Mitch said, in the middle is like a menu where you can change out the cards. You can play with different desserts every time, different appetizers, different... Mm-hmm main courses and that's what adds the replayability of this game right, by changing it up each, each time food type scores differently and you just have you don't play with all of the different foods you kind of pick which ones you want to play with and there's mm-hmm. different difficulties based on the food cards that you choose to play with yeah we're not really big fans of sushi but we really like sushi go it's a yeah, great it's uh, a really great party game sushi go party yeah that's sushi go sushi go party sushi yeah sushi go Party. Party. Alright, the last one on my list is <sighs> Wavelength, published by CMYK Games, uh, the same makers who published Monikers. Wavelength is is really fun game. Um, it's kind of cool because the game itself you play in the actual box of the game. Uh, so you have this kind of crazy contraption. Uh, it's a wheel. And you unveil, you lift this kind of like lid up, and there's a spectrum. So the spectrum is like two, three, four, three, two, and it's like a yes, yeah, it's like a a, a wave of points. So on your turn, uh, you close the the wheel so that you can't see what the spectrum is, and you kind of mix it up so that you randomize where that spectrum is gonna fall, and then you reveal it. So the spectrum could be in the middle, it could be to the right, to the left, anywhere in between. And then you pick a spectrum card. And the spectrum cards can be like hot or cold. And depending on where that spectrum is, you have to give a clue to your team. It can be like a short phrase or a short sentence, but you have to give a clue to make your team guess where that spectrum is. So let's use the hot and cold example. So hot, cold, and say your spectrum is right in the middle. Your clue or phrase might be like... Room temp. Yeah. (laughs) A glass (laughs) of water. So then you close it, right? And then you turn it around so that your team can see the spectrum and then they have this red dial. So as a team, you have to guess, okay, based on the clue, a glass of water where do we think that falls on the hot or cold spectrum? And then they have to turn the dial and kind of agree upon where they think that would fall. They might be in the middle. Someone might think that the water might be warmer or colder and they adjust it. And then once they're set, the other team gets to decide if they think it's that over it's or under. over or under. Um, that's all they get to guess. If they just think over or under and say, so say they say over. They take the little pencil and they put it on the side of the spectrum that they think it is. And then once they're, you know, set on their answer, um, the person who gave the clue reveals the spectrum. And depending on where the red line is, um, if it's right on the four, you get the four points. If it's on the three, they get three points to two points. And then if the other team, if they were under or over, they would get one if they mm-hmm. were correct. You just keep playing to ten. It's It's really fun. The contraption itself is just a really cool concept. The the only thing I would say about it is I wish the the wheel contraption stayed in the box a little bit better. Like like, like if it snapped in. Yeah. When we played with your family, we had like an unprecedented first game to where your team scored four points the first time and then four points the second time to where you just shot up right to eight points. And it's I feel like that kind of gave us like a misrepresentation of how easy the game is because it's not easy. I think, it's not always easy. I think we just lucked out with our yeah. spectrums and where the dial fell. But yeah, yeah, it's very wavelength. fun. It's wavelength. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Wavelength. Wavelength. The last game we're going to talk about is Camel Up, published by Eggert Spiel and a game designed by Stefan Bogan. 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 So Camel Up is a three to eight bidding game uh, where you're you're bidding or betting on a camel race. So there's six camels that are racing around the track uh, going one way, and there's two crazy camels going the other. So Camel Up uh, has a crazy mechanic to where the camels can stack on top of one of each other, and the way way they move is this crazy cool 3D pyramid that has uh, the different colored dice that correspond with the camels. 
So on your turn, one of the, your actions that you can do is grab the pyramid and the it's house. Like a dice tower. Yeah, it's like pyramid. a dice tower. You shake it up and press the little button on the side and the dice rolls out and you move that camel that many spaces. But if any camels are on top of it, it carries that camel with it. So once five dice come out, players can then, or players then cash in their bid tokens because on your turn you can take bid tickets uh, that will pay out at, at the different legs of the race. And I'm not doing a good job of explaining everything you can do because on... On your turn you can take one of four actions. Is there four? One, two, three... One, two, three, four. That's what it is. Yeah, so there's four actions you can mm -hmm. take. You can advance the race, which is grabbing the pyramid, and then, yeah. And uh, roll in the and die. And roll in the die. Uh, and we, we do want to uh, say that we use a house roll for when you do take that action. Um, from Faster Than Meeple, Jeff and Jamie, check out their channel. Um, they're amazing. Uh, but they use a house roll to where any time you take the pyramid action, you have to go camel, camel up, up, and everyone yeah. at the table says it. It's so much fun. It <laughs> yeah. definitely adds to the game by it does, camel Yeah, it up. does add uh, a more fun element to taking that pyramid action. Mm -hmm. So the second action you can do is taking a bid ticket. So for each camel that's in the race, the five different colors, you can take the top corresponding bid ticket as your action on your turn, and they pay out differently at the at the ends of the at the end of the leg. Mm -hmm. To where the top bid ticket pays five, uh, then the next person to grab that color would get three, and then the next person gets two and two. Third action you can take is betting on the first place first place person, the person who will win the race, and the person who's going to come in dead last. So you do that by uh, placing down the corresponding color card from your hand yep. into one of those piles. And the thing is, you only have one, one, of each color. one of each color card. So if at the early on in the race, you bet on blue to win, and then halfway through, blue looks like he's going to come in dead last, you can't, yep. you you can't, can't swap that you can't card. Swap You're, you've there. already voted he's going to be in the winner. You don't get another blue card yeah. to use. So once five dice come out, you then pay out the bid tickets, give people their little Egyptian pounds, and reset the bid ticket stack for going uh, two, two, three, five on the stack. Yep. Put the dice back in, give it a good shake, and then the person who is last to roll the dice, it is the player directly to the left of them, will start the next, next round, and play just continues until uh, a camel crosses the finish line. Now the crazy part is there's... There's crazy camels yeah. that are going backwards on the track with the gray dice that are, have white text or black text. And if your camel's on that, when that gray dice comes up, you have camels moving backwards. Right, it's carrying you backwards on the track if, mm -hmm. you're, if you're on it. So that can add a fun element in the game about halfway when the, the camels meet. You know, a camel in the lead might get on one of those crazy camels and now they're going backwards and now they're in the last. So it just adds a really fun element because you never really know who's gonna win it just it kind of it's very it's very crazy and the stacking element can definitely make some upsets mm -hmm. so so in in a three to six player game it's like those are your basic actions but when you play seven or eight there's a fifth action you can take which is partner up mm -hmm. and in that you uh use the partner up card with another player in which case you'll get one of their payouts from one of the bid tickets that they've collected for that round and they don't get a choice whether or not the partnership happens. Just the first person partner up with someone, they're in a partnership. So one thing that we've added is just shaking the player's hand and going partner up at yeah. the same time. And that, that was pretty fun when we were doing that with my family. Yeah, so if somebody takes like the five bid token for the blue and blue is looking real good, the next player can be like partner up. And then they, mm -hmm. they shake hands and the person gets no choice in the matter. Uh, but they can't partner with anybody else because they're you already... You can only have one partnership in partnered. a round, yeah. Uh, but then you get the benefits of that bid ticket. But yeah, it's it's a very fun game. It's very thematic. It's it, crazy. It's fun. It's got a good table presence because there's this big uh, it's a pine, pop -up book. pine tree. Is that what it is? Palm tree. Palm tree. <laughs> the pine, pine tree. tree. It's a big palm, palm tree, tree. That, that unfolds. And then with the pyramid in the middle. It doesn't need to be there, but does it make the game look cool? It yeah. does. It does. So it's it's very good. It's got a good table presence. Any time we play it, if somebody's not playing, I feel like they walk over and they're like, oh my gosh, what is this game? Mm -hmm. This looks really cool. Um, so yeah, table presence is uh, A plus for this game. Uh, again, it's a game you can kind of play with anybody. There's, you know, one of four actions you can take on your turn. They're all pretty simple. It's a good family game, a good game you can play with pretty much anybody. That's Camel Up. It's Camel Up.
If you like the games that you saw here, be sure to check out your friendly local gaming store. And for us, that is Recess. In North Olmstead, Ohio. They got a fantastic selection of games. Uh, if you liked our pick of games, I'll hit that like button down below. Make sure to subscribe, leave subscribe. a comment, let us know what your favorite party game or, you know, large player count games are. We're always looking for more. Mm -hmm. uh, we have big families, so. <laughs> <laughs> and be sure to click that bell because uh, we release new videos every Sunday. Yep. So you'll get that notification when we release the video. And my name's Mitch. And I'm Morgan. And together we're Emma's for Meeple. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. Bye.